today I'm going to talk about cells, the cell theory, and microscopes. The word microscope is given to the tool used to view objects that are too small to be seen with the naked eye. They make small things look larger using lenses to bend the light. This is called magnification. A simple microscope has one lens, but a compound microscope, like the one in this picture, uses two lenses at once to magnify an image. One lens is fixed in the eyepiece. The second lens is chosen from a group of two or three lenses on the revolving nose piece or the objective lens seen in the picture. Here you can see the eyepiece lens, the objective lens with three magnifications to choose from. The slide, the stage, the clips to hold the slide to the stage, the coarse focus, the fine focus, and the light which illuminates the object. To know the total magnification of an object seen through a compound microscope, the magnification of the two individual lenses are multiplied together. For example, if the lower lens magnifies the object four times and the eyepiece lens magnifies the object 10 times, the total magnification would be 40 times or 40x. You can do the same calculation with a magnification of 10 in the lower lens or the objective lens. 10 times 10 is 100x. And with an objective lens of 40, your total magnification would be 400x. The microscopes we just saw focus light through lenses to produce a magnified image. However, other microscopes can produce a more detailed image. This is called resolution when the image can be seen much more clearly. Here in this picture of microtubules, the conventional microscope image does not have nearly as good a resolution as the store microscope image does. The early scientists used light microscopes, but in the 1930s, scientists developed several types of microscopes which can obtain pictures of objects that are too small to be seen with light microscopes. The small hairs on this spider's body would never be seen under a light microscope. This image was taken from an electron microscope, which allows high magnification and better res resolution than light microscopes. Here is another picture from the insect called the flea. This image was taken using an electron microscope. Here is another image of a butterfly taken using an electron microscope. Three people made key discoveries in the early study of cells. One of them was Robert Hooke, who saw slices of cork under a microscope. Cork is the bark of a tree made of dead cells. Hooke thought they looked like tiny rectangular rooms, so he called them cells, which means small rooms. Anton discovered the first living things to be seen under a microscope. These were bacteria, which he called little animals. Finally, three other men named Sliden, Swan, and Virchow came to some conclusions about cells. All plants are made from cells, all animals are made of cells, and all cells come from other cells. Together, these five men formed the cell theory. The cell theory states that one, all living things are made of cells. Two, cells are the basic units of structure and function. And three, all cells are produced from other cells. Because cells are common to all living things, cells can produce clues about the functions that living things perform. And because all cells come from other cells, scientists can study them to learn about growth and reproduction. The cell theory holds true for all living things, no matter how big or how small. Well, thanks for listening to me today about cells, cell theory, and microscopes. Have a great day. See you soon.